Good morning, lads and lassies. And it's a sad day, so this video is more about cars than it is about wakeboarding. Um, because basically, I've sold my golf over. Um, so if you follow the channel for a while, you know I love them, I've had a few of them. Uh, and I got this a little over a year ago, I think about 13 or 14 months ago. And it's been brilliant, I absolutely love it. It's the best all around car, I think, you can buy within reason in Ireland with our high taxes and insurance issues and all that. Um, it's very practical, it's somewhat okay on fuel, you'll get like 30 miles to the gallon on average and yeah, it fits your wakeboard and I always had a roof rack on it for the bikes, but I've decided to sell it. Now the reason for this, well there's a couple, uh, the main one being is, as you know I review cars with Dundee and now with that I just have a press car more or less every single week and so I'm only driving this when I want to rather than like needing it. Uh, whereas when I got it, I was using it every day, and it's a brilliant all-rounder. Um, but the second reason is the market's quite strong, and me having a car there that's probably going to devalue quite heavily over the next year or two, there's no need for it, especially if I'm not really using it. So I've decided to sell it on whilst the market's good, and get myself a little bit more of a toy, which we will hopefully, all going well, be collecting in this video too. Um, but yeah, it's a bittersweet day. This is a peach of an ore, it's relatively low mileage and it's meticulously maintained. Um, so the new owner is lucky to get it. Um, sad, but I'm also happy. It's one of those weird ones. All right, here comes our last ever pull. I will miss, it's like driving a Tesla and the DSG, it's so easy, it's so fast to change gears. I definitely will miss it. But anyway, let's click to go and up to get the new car. All right, so here it is. Behind me, my new 350Z, or 350Z, depends on how you say it. It's essentially, well, it's definitely the cheapest one in Ireland, and I think the UK, and potentially if it's the cheapest in the UK, it could be one of the cheaper ones in the world. Um, it's pretty high mileage, it is very worse for wear, and it's most definitely a project. So I'm gonna run you through it right now, um, but basically, from the small things, like the headlights really need to be polished, all the way through to the rear arches, which this is gonna be a bit of a bigger job. As you can see here, they are pretty worn down. So yeah, as I said, it's definitely a bit of a project, but I've never actually owned a car that I've had to work on. I've always needed something reliable, but I don't really, I'm gonna regret saying that, but I don't really at the moment. Um, but that said, the engine on this seems to be quite good and so is the gearbox and it's also had a new clutch. Um, in terms of the spec, so first of all, bear with me, I know very, very little about Japanese cars. It's essentially my first one. I had a Subaru years ago for a few months. Um, but basically it's my first proper Jap car. Um, in terms of the spec, so it's a GT line, I think it's called, which means it gets, it's actually pretty insane. It has electric seats, they're heated. It has cruise control. Um, what else does it have? It also has Apple CarPlay, which is amazing. Um, and then the GT spec gets these forged alloys. So originally I was gonna change the wheels, but I think I'm gonna keep them and maybe just get them refurbed. Um, but yeah, so there's kind of a bottomless pit of things that can be done. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna run you through it now as we go for a little bit of a drive and then we'll catch up afterwards. Okay, so first things first, there's a bit of a hole in the exhaust, um, so we will be welding that up or maybe replacing it, who knows. But, yeah, so this car, where did it come about? Basically, it was actually owned, so I'll turn that radio off. It was owned by a guy I'm quite friendly with who goes to the cable park. And last year we kind of joked that Tim and I would like to buy it um, and use it for the track. And then we hummed and hummed, and Tim nearly bought it like six months ago, but never did. And I was just like, do you know what? I really want something exactly like that. Um, so I spoke to him like four days ago and then here we are. Um, but yeah, so Adam has used it. Most importantly, he's checked and the weight board actually can fit in the back. Um, it's a little bit of a faff, but you can get it in. 
Um, but yeah, so I know Alan, he's owned it for I think eight or nine years um, and he's just looking to kind of upgrade to a newer one. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely a project, there's a lot wrong with it. Um, but there's also a lot right with it, most importantly, oh actually the brake squeak, so it needs new pads and discs. Um, but again, that's all stuff that we can do ourselves, that's not major, major work. The V6, not really pulling too hard, but oh, it's so nice, and obviously that exhaust kind of distorts it, but I've watched some videos on YouTube, and when the exhaust is, doesn't have a hole in it, it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, so basically, let me explain. As you may know, if you've been watching my YouTube for ages, in Ireland, we've crazy taxes on cars and just like everywhere secondhand cars have gone crazy prices and Ireland's been hit even worse because we used to import a lot of our secondhand stock from the UK but since Brexit that whole door closed because it was no longer just the vehicle registration tax which is up to 43% but it was also then 10% import duties and that which is 23% so you're talking upwards of 70% tax on a car when you buy in the UK so it means it's very expensive now there's a small loophole which is if a car was registered in Northern Ireland before January 2020 then it was exempt from the duties and the VAT so you're just ch charged the 43% uh, vehicle registration tax so that's very complicated but basically this has fallen into a little bit of a loophole um, and I did pay very little I'll tell you straight up I paid £3,950, which I think is pretty good value now. It's going to need another two or three or maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, and then the vehicle registration tax should be a little bit over €2,000. Um, so I should be all into it. And this sounds like crazy money for a 350Z. Should be all into it when it's fixed and running for about 9 or 10 And um, That's involving myself and Tim doing a lot of the work. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's why it was very attractive to me because I, it, it fell under that loophole because Adam's owned it in Northern Ireland for the last nine years. Um, but yeah, anyway, driving impressions, obviously the noise is a big thing. It's a bit too loud in here, to be honest, right now. Um, I had a 2003 Ford Mustang V6 manual in America and it feels so similar. Um, so if you're in America and you want a 350Z but they're gone a little bit expensive, just buy one of those because it was the really undesirable shape as well. Um, but yeah, it feels very like that to drive. Um, it feels old, it feels very sports car, which I like and I just think all the cars I drive for press cars are all new, a lot of them are electric, hybrid, whatever they might be. And they're all so similar. And then you get into something like this, something like this, and it's a complete juxtaposition to everything. It's so different. It's full of character. And so yeah, I'm buzzing with it. I don't know what my plan is. I mean, I intend to keep it right now. Um, and I actually really, really was at one point being like, oh, you could make a few quid off that if I fix it up and sold it on, because in Ireland it's worth probably 12, 13, I don't know. But now I'm kind of falling in love with it a little bit. I just love how much character it is, and I definitely think if we do all the work, I'm gonna to wanna to keep it. But anyway, this is it. It's very comfortable in here. I've got air conditioning, heated seats, Apple CarPlay, cruise control. Last night on the drive home, it didn't skip a beat. Um, so yeah, anyway, that is, 350z so there you go that's basically it um if you have any experience with 350z's please give me some tips also if you know where i can get things that's the weirdest part with german cars i knew all the good websites i knew all the good forums but with this i have no idea and i think it's probably gonna be best to just replace this wing and the other one because they're both pretty worn um but yeah step number one is definitely just getting up on the ramp seeing how bad the underneath is it does seem okay though to be fair and then the next thing is to get a vrt'd and then i guess we'll start working i'm going to do basically a full suspension replacement because it's all very tired and um, and obviously a very thorough service and then basically i just want it back to kind of factory fresh really really nice clean and um, that's kind of what i want with it which is yeah i just feel like it's a very cool car and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Very, very different. If you would like me to kind of update you as we go on this, as we kind of essentially restore it, let me know. Um, but I know that this channel is mostly wakeboard focused and my next video is gonna be about a new 
big series that I'm going to be doing on the YouTube in June, July and August. So make sure to stay tuned. Anyway, thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.